James Kaufman, World News Report. Today, October 4th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. NOAA warning, geomagnetic storms this weekend. This week, two powerful X-class solar flares, an X7.15 and an X9.1, and a series of lesser M flares hurled coronal mass ejections towards Earth. A new NOAA model shows three of them hitting or grazing our planet between October 4th and October 7th. Please notice, folks, that none of the plasma rises over 20 centimeters cubed, even for the two strong, directly Earth-facing X-flares. The most potential coronal mass ejection, number two, i.e. caused by the X9.1 solar flare, is expected to arrive during the late hours of October 5th UTC time. This could spark a strong or severe geomagnetic storm with auroras at mid-latitudes. Well, how can it when you have plasma coming in at less than 20 centimeters cubed? For observers in the U.S., this means the night of October 5th and 6th. The other two CMEs, number one, the X7.1, and the number three are less potent. We can see that number one also does not generate plasma according to their prediction over 20 centimeters cubed. By themselves, they regularly wouldn't cause much of a geomagnetic storm on X7.15. At this time of year, however, even weak coronal mass ejections, which these are far from weak, can be effective due to the Ottomanol Russell McPherson effect. The collective effect of all three coronal mass ejections could therefore cause strong to severe storms throughout the forecast interval. And again, this is from today, the 4th. We should see number one arriving. We'll take a look at that because nothing's arrived uh, through the 7th where we see number three arriving. Now, we never saw a proton storm, even associated with the large X9.1 solar flare that seemed to be directly Earth-facing, uh, really from any of the flares. And we never saw an electron uptick whatsoever. I've never seen this before, with solar flares that are this strong and Earth-facing. I'm wondering, is this real or is this Memorex? Now, this is more than an impressive coronal mass ejection associated with yesterday's X9.1 solar flare. You would think that we would have seen a proton storm headed towards Earth, i.e. the little white dots that we often see even when the X flare is on the back side of our sun. We also see that our electron count never went up. Let's take a look at that. First, headed over to Go's proton flux. We're looking at seven days of proton activity. We don't see even a small bump in the road on this chart from our Go's 18, 10 million volts, our Go's 18, 50 million volts, our GOES 18 100 million volts, or our newly added GOES 18 500 million volts. Nothing moved with these two strong X flares that were supposedly Earth facing. Is it real or is it Memorex? Is this a distraction from everything else happening? Let's bounce over to our GOES electron flux. We see no electron uptick over the last three or four days when these very powerful X flares set off coronal mass ejections that were supposedly directly headed towards Earth. We don't even have the electron content slightly breaking the space weather threshold. 
This is just about unheard of. I wish someone would explain to me what's going on here. Now, headed over to our planetary KP index, a newly upgraded index that NOAA and NASA utilize, we see that we've also seen no spike in geomagnetic storms. And our first impact from the first X flare, the X7.15, was supposed to occur today on the 4th. We have three more hours of quote-unquote the 4th UTC time, which ends tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time here in the U.S. I wanted to see if we'd been hit because the model shows the impact during the middle of the day. That so far has not happened. And just to make sure, well, I went over to the Discover satellite to see if I might be able to see some plasma inbound or an uptick in solar winds. Heading over to our Discover real-time solar wind satellite, I wanted to make sure that we hadn't been impacted and maybe the KP indexes weren't reacting. Well, first I looked at plasma. I did notice some scragglers up here, but that was only for a few moments of the day. Most all of this is far below 10 centimeters cubed, which is the space weather threshold. They were only looking for about 20 centimeters cubed, but claimed that we should or could see strong to severe geomagnetic storms from the first X7.15 solar flare and associated coronal mass ejection. As I indicated, we only have three more hours in the day. This would be an awful slow moving coronal mass ejection if we don't see anything today. And again, looking at solar temperatures, they look very normal. Looking at solar wind speeds, we had some scragglers, but it looks like they started out about 350 and they have peaked about 435, but nothing that would indicate a chromas ejection impact and nothing out of the ordinary whatsoever. What's going on here, you ask? So, I am more than a little confused. First off, why is the plasma going to be so light with these huge halo eruptions inbound? Why haven't we seen anything occur today? Why haven't we seen a proton storm of any sort during the eruptions themselves? Why haven't we seen the electron count rise at all? Now, for any of my subscribers, please point your smartphones towards the north tonight after dark and please take one picture of what's going on and see if y'all see any aurora borealis your actual smartphone can see it a lot better than the human eye can and please email it to worldnewsreporttoday at gmail.com and we'll take a look at these and show them, if there are any, in tonight's live broadcast. With that said, God bless each and every one of you guys. Please share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible. Bizarro World.